and you've got Scorpio at the bottom, which is the second water sign. So you've got Mars, the planet of conflict, <coughs> um, in Scorpio. And Scorpio is very philosophical, but it's very deep, and it's ruled by Pluto, and it's very karmic, and it's very... In life, you have to learn to overcome disappointments. You have to learn to pick yourself up, dust yourself off, get back on the horse, let it go for goodness sakes, and step forward into a new place. So I love that at the bottom the vines look sort of like a butterfly, which is the hint that transformation is possible if you will let the disappointment go. So the disappointment needs to die. The sadness needs to die. You have to learn to let things go. And so then we go to the next card, which is the pleasure card, which means if you decide to let it go, you have a resurgence of pleasure. So um, you feel better, um, you kind of come back into the game, you're willing to play again, you haven't taken all your marbles and gone home, you're willing to jump back in. Um, and so notice that we've now protected the flow. So these look like lanterns and the water is flowing within the lantern. So notice that when you get disappointed, you come back but you don't let it free flow again. So did you ever notice when you got your heart hurt the first time when you were young, and then you come back into the next relationship, you're a little bit more careful, you're a little bit more cautious, so you contain the energy a little bit more, you're not as open as you used to be, but you're happy, but you're a little bit more protected, okay? So notice that the water is still a little off, you know, the water's flowing, but it's still a little off, You've got the symbol of the sun at the top, and you've got Scorpio at the bottom. So you've got illumination and clarity coming in to this kind of philosophically deep, complex place of Scorpio. So you have clarity um, in a new philosophy. You're trying to let that new philosophy shine. It's more in alignment. It's more balanced, but it's still a little protected. So then you go to the next card, and. The debauch card is a very intense card because debauch obviously represents sexual guilt, fear, insecurity. Um, it also represents drug addiction, intoxication. This card is also a cancer card, a lymphatic system problem card, a digestive system problem card. So when somebody gets this card and they're asking a health issue, I would say, is your lymphatic system okay? Is your digestive system okay? Um, you have toxins in your body. Um, and again, when you go too much into luxury, sometimes in luxury you can go too much into, say, drugs or alcohol for your own pleasure, okay? And obviously that creates a certain problem. And then you can, if you go too far emotionally, like, I want to feel good all the time, so I'm going to take this drug or I'm going to have this alcohol all the time, eventually your body will break down. Like, you can't, the nature of emotions is that you need good emotions and bad emotions. All emotions are access doors to God. Um, all emotions are energy of God's love and light trying to move through the kinks of your nervous system. So what happens is people go, I just want to be happy all the time. And I'm like, well, I would love that, but that's just not the reality in which we live, that you need to learn to navigate um, the heavier emotions. Fear, which is this card. Shame, which is this card. Guilt, which is this card. Insecurity, which is this card. Um, not being good enough. All of those things you need to learn to navigate. So notice this card looks putrid. Um, so everything has gotten thick and mucky. I don't know if you've ever seen a lake that's been choked by algae, but the water, everything just gets thick. It just becomes so thick with the algae that nothing else can grow. It basically, the algae takes all the oxygen out of the water, and so nothing but the algae can actually grow there. So this is stagnation. There's a lot of stagnant energy moving through this at this time. You've got Venus at the top, which is love, like you want love. So I'm feeling bad and I'm feeling afraid and I'm feeling shame and I'm feeling guilt because I need love. I need you to love me. Well, neediness is not the most attractive thing, right? So it's kind of a desperate thing. And the reality with this card is, okay, wait a second, I think you need to learn to love yourself. I think you need to learn to value yourself. You need to stop looking to substances or things or people to validate you or make you feel loved. You actually have to step out of that guilt place and say, 
I am a valuable person, but this card, because it does represent sexual guilt and intoxication and um, sexual diseases and things like that, I mean, you have to kind of look at it from a lot of different angles depending on what the cards are around it and just say, something's not okay with this card. There's a lot of fear and insecurity kind of moving with this card. Um, so then you go to the next card, and when things are sticky and you're in fear and constriction, Unfortunately, they have a tendency to get worse before they get better. <laughs> and that's what this card is representing. So now it's actually gotten worse. But sometimes when things get worse, it forces the breakthrough. So the Indolence card says that um, you're, it's, it's, you've got two lotuses that are blooming in a swamp. If you know anything about lotuses, lotuses don't like swamps. Um, they like clear flowing water. So the fact that we've got lotuses blooming in a swamp says that the water underneath is actually moving and flowing. But you can't see it because you're on the surface and all you see is the guck. So there's this point where you're just like, oh my gosh, I am so stuck. I'm miserable, I'm unhappy. Um, I probably need to leave material successes for spiritual successes, the lotus. That I need to stop looking at my physical world and I need to use the physical world block as a motivation to do spiritual work. So whenever I get this card, this card is my motivation to do spiritual practices because oftentimes my external world is really stuck and when it's that stuck, all you can do is meditate. And I find when I shift my energy internally, my external will shift. So you don't want to go running around trying to clear the external when you get this card. You want to stop, regroup, go inside and clear your own inner self and then your external world will start to clear. Now this card again is, is a serious stagnation card, so you can get people who have um, lymphatic cancers and this is definitely a cancer card. So if you got the debauch card with the indolence card together you re and somebody's asking a health question specifically, you want to really go, wow, you know, you should get your lymphatic system checked, you should get, you know, to see if you have any cancers. I mean, is there there's something toxic and stagnant and stuck um, that needs to be addressed and dealt with. So there's some flow but there's not a lot of flow, but it's very cloudy and murky. And you've got Saturn, the planet of hard work and struggle in Pisces. And Pisces is considered the sign of completion. It's about the end sign in the zodiac. It's considered the old man. So Pisces are trying to complete everything. So it's, it's warning you that there's a struggle to find the completion. There's a struggle to find the way through. And from there you go to the next card, which is the happiness card. And the happiness card, notice everything went that beautiful third eye color, that violet ray, um, purple. Um, now all the cups are flowing again. So again, if you deal with your inner self, which is what this indolence card is trying to tell you, if you go internal and you leave material successes for spiritual successes, you will find happiness and the happiness will start to move everything in your external in some way. So if you don't like what's going on in your external world, always deal with your internal world and then the external world will shift in direct response to that. So we've got beautiful cups overflowing, everything seems beautifully aligned. You've got the sign of Jupiter at the top and Pisces at the bottom. So Jupiter's the planet of expansion, money, and abundance, and Pisces is the sign of completion. And so we've got complete happiness. We've got complete abundance. We've got, that's lovely. It's really nice and you feel really happy when that's going on. And then you've got the Satiety card as the final card. And the Satiety card is about pursuit of pleasure crowned with perfect success. Everything arranged and settled as wished, lasting success, peacemaking, and generosity. So with this card, you've got all the cups overflowing. Everything's overflowing. So when you've are been willing to navigate all the twists and turns of the watery, emotional, feminine within you, um, you will find complete happiness at a certain point. I like to think of this card as nirvana. Like there's a point where no matter what's happening, you start to really appreciate every moment. You start to feel satisfied with everything happening in your life, one way or the other. Um, and so you've got the symbol of the Mars at the top in Pisces at the bottom. It's really hard to see that it's in this little tiny place, but it's, it's, it's down there. But you've got Mars at the top and Pisces in there. And so you've got energy and vitality moving into completion. So when people are asking questions related to how is my money going to be in old age 
and they get this card, what would my answer be? Terrific. Absolutely terrific. So this is one of the old age money cards, long term lasting success cards, fulfillment cards. It's, it's a beautiful card. And then from there, everything starts over again. <laughs> so it's just the nature of the flow. Okay? Can you say how debauch goes into indolence? Okay. Like the other cards you kind of talked about how they move into right. them? So you want to think of it as, um, it's a great question. Um, the easiest way I like to think of this one is related to intoxication or drug addiction. So debauch is always about excessiveness, intoxication, drug addiction, uh, excessive behavior. So you know you feel you feel great t short term, but you're basically trying to make your insecurity go away. So when you do more drugs, more drugs, more drugs, further into debauch, further into excessiveness, what happens then is your body actually starts to break down, which is the indolence card. So there's a point where your body can't take it. So even though you want to do it and it feels really good, your body actually starts to collapse. And so it's at the body collapse moment when oftentimes people wake up. So when their body starts to literally die, they suddenly have to go, oh, I think I better do something different. I've blown out my adrenals or, you know, I'm, I'm, my energy is terrible or I can't maintain anymore. So um, does that make sense? Does that help a little bit? Yeah. Okay. So any other questions on that? On the, the disappointment, the mm -hmm. five, is that, uh, is that also like the card of grief? Um, the, the, what, what's interesting is you're, we're just about to that, which is that the swords, um, the way Aleister Crowley saw grief is that he saw it a condition of the mind, whereas disappointment is a condition of emotions. Oh, and so okay. he actually separated them, which is sort of interesting. But he, he did it different. And uh -huh. that's a perfect question because in other decks that would be true. That would be in That would be true. Mm -hmm. In this one it's the swords. Yeah, okay. the swords. It'll put it into the swords. Okay. So on to the swords. So the Ace of Swords represents Michael the Archangel, and swords always represent the Ace of Swords represents winter time. So uh, you want to think in the old days again that um, in the summer people were oftentimes farming, they were in the fields, they had to do a lot of hard work, um, and in the winter time was the time for mental activities, reading, learning, and books. And that's why even to this day, I mean, we have summer break for school and you start in the fall. So when the harvest is over is when school starts back up again. That's why that happened that way. So this card is a winter card. So it means in the winter time when you want to study, learn, explore things, you've got the time because in the old days you would be inside because it was cold. Um, so this is Michael the Archangel. This is the Sword of Truth and Clarity. Notice it's a green sword, which is that truth is coming from the heart. You, on the hilt, you've got a waxing and a waning moon, which shows the full cycles of life. You've got three balls, which is a trinity, and trinities are always good and, clar and create clarity. On the hilt of the sword, you've got a snake running down the hilt of the sword. So again, life force and passion is being the truth teller that's cutting through things. The sword is piercing the consciousness like a crown at the top. You've got clouds all around it, which shows you the airy quality um, that we're in the air, which is the mind. And so swords all represent the mind, and swords represent the masculine again. So it's ideas. So whenever I see this card, I always think of those um, cartoons where they have the bubble that has the, the light bulb in it. It's like ding. So whenever I get this card, it's ding. So Michael the Archangel is sort of whacking me on the head and saying, come on, come on, we have an idea, let's do this, let's, let's go. A new idea, a new possibility. So, uh, but it also says that something is cutting through. So an idea is cutting through the illusion, um, making you more aware. And from there, you go to the two. And the two of swords is the peace card. And um, what I love about this card is that the two swords are piercing a flower. Um, the hilts of the swords, if you look at them very closely, are angels praying. So there's little angels like this, and they've got wings. Okay? So angels are always praying for peace. Um, but notice, peace is tense. 